So we're first going to start with this sign that I picked up from Dollar Tree. Um, they have a couple of versions of this, but we're going to be using the back of it, so it really doesn't matter what it says. And then I'm going to be removing this little juke string twine at the top. Um, if you want to use that later, just make sure that you save it and set it off to the side. I am laying mine down on a towel, but I'm using black chalk paint, the Waverly brand, to just coat this entire thing. Um, you will need probably two coats to cover the whole thing, but I will say I highly encourage y'all to use chalk paint. Acrylic paint takes forever to cover something like this. Um, and so you just want to make sure that you got it really well and that you can't see like the streaks of the paintbrush and stuff. And then something that I tend to forget is also make sure that you get the edges of your sign um, if that's something that's going to bug you. If it's like brown and then the sign's black. <laughs> I am just using a little foam paintbrush from the Dollar Tree by the way. And this is what it looks like after my... Actually no, I only had to do one coat on this. I'm sorry. If you use white, you'll need two coats. Black, I only needed one. Um, and then I printed out the spell from um, Hocus Pocus to put on this. Now <laughs> I have a typo, which I realized later on, um, but it's fine. The sign is still cute. Um, <laughs> so this is a little trick that I have. You print out what you want the sign to say on paper, and then you scribble with your pencil all over the back of it and then place it down on the sign and then you just go in and trace the lettering and what it's going to do is it's going to transfer the pencil on the back of the paper onto the sign. So this is like a cheater's method of if you don't have a silhouette or a cricket and you can't cut vinyl or if you don't have a stencil on hand or whatever it is. I've done this um, on my channel before and I learned it from another YouTube channel. I think it's Crafts by Caitlin. She's a great DIY channel. You guys should check her out. Um, but yes, if you guys see here, it transferred all of the words on and this is pretty much what it looked like after I did all of them. And now I'm going to go in with a white paint marker and just trace over the words. I would highly encourage y'all to do a paint marker over um, a paintbrush. You'll have a lot better control over the lettering and it's a lot easier to keep it nice and neat. And if you guys were wondering what the typo is, it's this part right here. I wrote Wellica, and it's actually Melica Mystica. Gosh, I'm a fraud of a Hocus Pocus fan. And then after I finished up the words, I decided to just add a little design. Obviously this guy is your guy's call. I just did little kind of like polka dots into like magic. I don't know. That's kind of what I was going for. Um, but if you guys are scared to freehand, you can again print something off and put the pencil on the back of it and then trace it. I just freehanded mine, but dealer's choice. And then I actually was really happy with the very bottom part that I ended up freehanding because without trying, I feel like I made it kind of look like cat eyes. And this is what the sign looked like once I was done with all of the words and the designs. I really do like it. I think it came out super cute. Um, the next part that we're going to do is making it look kind of like planks of wood. So I just took this meter stick that I have. If you have a ruler or any straight edge, that would work. And I'm going in with my pencil and just tracing across the line.
That's what I loved about this sign is it kind of naturally did this for me. Now, the first time I did the line, I actually did use the paint marker. Um, and then I realized that I could have just used the paint marker and the, the stencil, like the ruler originally. I didn't really need to do the pencil part. But if you are freehanding, then you definitely want to go in with the pencil first. Also, these lines I've learned um, do tend to look a little more realistic if you do it with a paintbrush instead of the marker because they look more like planks. It just depends kind of the look you're going for. And then I decided on the top I was going to switch to this black ribbon because I felt like it went with the style a little bit better than that twine that came with the sign. Last thing you're going to want to do is add a layer of Mod Podge onto the top just to make sure that it doesn't scratch or chip. Um, I went with the matte finish Mod Podge instead of the gloss for this particular project um, and then I did get this from Dollar Tree as well. I also do find that the Mod Podge tends to apply better with a sponge brush rather than an actual paintbrush. And this should go without saying but just in case if you're working fast make sure that you've let your paint totally dry before you go in with the layer of Mod Podge. And your sign is all done. Um, the good thing about this one is I actually can display it on the wall or if you don't even want the ribbon you could always put it into one of those little um, frame holders that you can set down on a countertop. But I really like it. It's very Halloween, very hocus pocus and simple. Now this next thing that we are going to be making I found these little gather signs at the Dollar Tree. They did have a couple different versions. Um, there was one with black and white buffalo check that I saw everybody else finding, but I could not find it. So I just picked up some of these and I'm taping off the side because I actually did really like the border on these. If you don't, you can always just paint it. Um, same as I'm going to be doing to the top, but I liked the detail of the border. So I'm just using regular masking tape, taping these off and then we are going to be painting the top of this with that same black Waverly chalk paint. This is what it looked like after one coat and there's just a few spots that um, kind of are showing through so I ended up doing a second coat but I'll be honest with you guys I don't actually think it's necessary because <laughs> from like not being right on top of it you can't really see the difference. Um, you are going to need two of these signs to do this particular project, um, at least the way that I did it. You could do it with one sign if you make the words smaller, but I liked how it looked with two of these stacked on top of each other. So when you remove your masking tape, be really gentle with it because these are from Dollar Tree and um, the edging is actually like a paper. So I only had it tear up in like one spot, but it's because I wasn't being careful. So as long as you go slow and you're careful, then you'll be fine. Um, now we're going to take the two of these and we're going to attach them and I just showed you guys kind of where I tore it a little bit so I'm making sure that that's actually the inside of the sign so that it doesn't cause any problems. Uh, this is, if you guys look on the edge, if the masking tape didn't work perfectly and the paint kind of seeped, you can actually just scratch off the edge part with your finger. So, you know, simple fix. <laughs> So I am just going to be using hot glue to glue these together because I'm not, like, they didn't need to be super, super sturdy. If you're worried about it, you can always use hot glue and E6000. That'll provide you with a long-term and a short-term or quicker bond. Um, I did a version very similar to this where I made this into a potion rack last year. I'll have that video linked in the description box below if you're interested. It was a Hocus Pocus themed potion rack. And for that, I did use both types of glue. Um, because this is just a sign, I felt like hot glue was sturdy enough. And I am going to show you guys um, by shaking the sign around in just a moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
So once your signs are all glued together, you're going to use the same method that I used on the first sign in this tutorial. I printed off the words that I wanted. I chose to have it say it's just a bunch of hocus pocus. And then I am coloring the back with my pencil, um, filling in every spot where I'm going to need it to transfer onto the sign. And I'm just going to do that same method of tracing all of the letters onto the sign with my pencil first and then removing the paper and going in with my paint marker to fill it in. And this is what the second sign looked like when it was all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and will check out all of my other Hocus Pocus DIYs that I have in a playlist for you below. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!